and obviously with the focus on Saturday school it becomes a bit easier. But the Saturday school is so integrated with everything else that we do. Um, it's not a standalone exercise at all. And I'm just realizing I'm going to upset Jardine because I'm a walker. <laughs> I don't stand <laughs> still. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> <Okay. laughs> we'll make a plan. And even if I try to, I will forget. So, <laughs> so if I wander over, shout at me or something like that. Um, yeah, this is our new science centre building, which I'll, I will talk more about. Um, and what I'm going to talk about is I'll talk, I'll talk about Penreach in general and then contextualise the, the Saturday school. Um, we are situated in eastern Pumalanga, halfway between Nelspreit and White River. And the region that we work with, um, that smaller circle should actually go from Barberton um, northwards. We've got a few other projects. We've got one in Limpopo where we're working with the Mandela Bala World School at Mugaji. And then we've got um, these sort of consultancies, if you like, with um, Save the Children Fund in the UK, in the Free State, and in the um, contacts with a, a new project that's just starting up in Eastern Cape. But we have a constant stream of, of visitors who, where we share and, and so on and so forth. Um, and then within that area, we work, um, well, we've got two levels of operation. We have um, Saturday workshops where we get um, more than 2,000 teachers from over 900 schools. And they come, those are ECD and primary schools, and um, also on Saturdays, every Saturday, we have a Saturday school during term time um, in two centres one at, um, at Penrhyn, which is as it's halfway between White River and Nelspreet, and the others up in um, Bushback Bridge and, and near Hazyview in, in Kukru. Um, and we have two centres there that each have between 150 and 200 kids on Saturdays. Um, then we work closely with 13 schools and by closely I mean we support them at every single level we can possibly think of and some more that we haven't thought of yet um, and they are referred to as our SOS target schools because a specific funder um, has a project called SOS which stands for strengthening our schools and that even involves infrastructure um, which we would not normally say is our business but it's um, in order to get the schools functioning at a basic level, they need toilets that girls can go to and things like that. So we do get involved in those kind of things. And then within each of those um, four areas that I've indicated there, um, Bushback Ridge, um, um, Silpuli, Mkumazi, and, um, sorry, Mzakazi, and White River District, we have what we call learning communities. And a learning community is a high school and its feeder schools, including ECD centres. Um, and then what we've done, and this we've done this year, but we've been building up to it for several years, we've been around 21 years now, and um, we've become increasingly aware that the whole thing is a leaking bucket. And it doesn't matter where the holes are in the bucket, you've got to fix the lowest hole. And the lowest hole is literally <laughs> the toilets, um, is where you start sort of thing. So, um, we, we fix every hole we can find in the bucket because you, know, you find you make so much progress and no more. And it may be that girls are only attending past 40% of the time or something. So then you take action to fix that and gradually improve it. So we've created these learning communities where we've held a hotlers with the community and we put in everybody. So, and these circles, you know, for instance, that circle should be much bigger because I put all the departments in there. But we engage with everyone we can think of, and that's been very, very successful. It's only been going this year. We held a conference in January, February with each of the communities, and then they formed these community councils for education, which have nothing to do with the internal running of the school. Um, your education quality committees, or whatever they call, do that kind of thing. Um, but it's about creating a safe learning environment, especially for girls around the schools, and. Um, faith-based organisations, NGOs, anyone we can think of. And of course the learners themselves, the unions, very important. Unions are super active and super misguided in many, in many instances. And I'm not talking about the union as a whole, because um, we're engaging very well with the senior levels of the unions. But I'm talking about individual science stewards who actually don't have a clue, who um, cause a lot of damage. And 
and parents an environment where parents said here's our kid educated and don't even ask in fact have no idea who teaches their child what subjects they're doing how well they're doing we've got parents engaged and, and asking those kind of questions so a very very comprehensive program and um, then the program itself, looking at the bottom left of the screen, the academic program, as I've already indicated, the ECD and uh, primary school workshops for teachers. We then have Saturday schools um, for learners, and uh, not only Saturday schools, but afternoon tutorials, and so on and so forth. I'll explain that in a bit more detail in a moment. Um, school visits, we've got our teams go out during the week to visit those 13 target schools that I mentioned that we visit intensely as well as quite a lot of um, about 25 ECD centres that get regular visits and by regular I mean probably at least once a week and the high schools probably twice a week they get direct visits and support in the classroom. We run leadership camps for everybody from circuit managers to um, grade 5 and 6 children um, and the circuit manager one was a real eye-opener. We did that sort of as an afterthought this year when um, we found we, we were able to find some budget. And we always knew we should do it. And we, we're planning a change that's going to come, is going to involve circuits much more. And the circuit managers were totally blown away by the story that came out of that leadership camp. So um, the camps are very successful and very fundamental to what we do. This year, for the first time, we've been building up to this over a number of years. Um, we've employed a full-time psychologist. We have been engaging with an NGO called Makulu.org, who have provided us over the last three years with youth facilitators. Um, last year, we had one youth facilitator in each of those 13 schools. This year, we've got two, a girl and a boy. And they are from the community, very often orphans themselves. And they've been properly trained as youth facilitators. And they are doing amazing work. It's just unbelievable impact. The psychologist, her main um, task for this year was to start girls clubs and she started girls clubs in all 13 of those schools and within a month she had over 600 members. Just to give you an idea, she asked, and part of the girls clubs is teen parenting program and um, at one of our primary schools to get the thing going she called for a meeting of any child in grade six or seven who was a mother, 70 kids turned up in the primary school, um, some of them as young as 11. So.